so the, the, the marriage license business is so troubling. The fact that a prison chaplain presided over the, the wedding for these two, even though he was long sprung from jail, right? And then that one of the sheriff's department employees uh, who lists sex offender registration as part of her LinkedIn, and we're assuming they're the same people, it's the same name, right? What, what did the, um, what did Ivy's family have to say about that? Very, very troubled, very, very confused. Something is not adding up to them. The fact that it was the sheriff's office chaplain who married uh, Jesse McFadden and Holly, um, and that it was the sheriff's secretary who was also over the sex offender unit who signed off as a witness. They don't understand it, uh, and they're very, very confused. Listen to what they told me. There are some weird things that don't make a lot of sense, like the chaplain signing off on the marriage certificate and the witness being the sheriff's secretary. Have you been able to sort any of that out? Um, from my understanding, she's also, or the secretary is also the same person who is in charge of registering sex offenders as well. And she, in the secretary is the one who's supposed to schedule visits and do all that. And it's a little confusing that the same person who's supposed to be in charge of the sexual registry and whatnot is the same people or person that's signing marrying and signing certificate. off on marriage certificates for sex offenders to marry women Which that they clearly it? manipulated. Do you think the failures initially with not searching were just, was it an oversight? Or do you think there's something more to it with what you're learning about the marriage certificate? Well, at this point, I think there's more to it. I don't, I don't want to call it a cover up. I, I think it was, they already knew and they just wanted to do a light investigation and say, yep, we found their guy, that's it. There's no other story here. But yet we now know there's a lot more to the story that they didn't want to investigate. And that is the question, why? So they don't know the answers, Ashley. They wanted to clear something up. They, they're not getting additional information from the sheriff's office or from the state now investigating. They only know uh, what we know. Uh, we're going to be on the ground here really trying to figure out the, this marriage license thing because it, it's very, very strange. All of it. Why they haven't given press conferences, why they won't answer uh, you know, questions from the press, why they blame the press for misinformation when all we've been doing is begging them to do their jobs and then tell us why they haven't and what is happening. It's been confounding to me. And then to see that there's a connection between law enforcement and this filthy beast is extremely upsetting. The other question I have real quickly, Brian, is that Henrietta, Oklahoma is a population of 5,600 people. That's little. I can't understand how that small of a community, how it can't be rampant information that that guy is a sex offender and he married Holly down the street with the three kids, how that isn't just all over the place. Listen, I know it's surprising. You'd think in a small town, there are a lot of sex offenders around here, though. We've gone through the list. Uh, Justin Ivy's dad w was telling me even after the murders, they were at their other son's kindergarten graduation. There was a sex offender, he says, in the audience. The principal had to come out and tell that man to leave, someone who they say had been at the school before. They believe if these murders hadn't happened, they wouldn't have even been noticing and tracking these guys uh, the way they are right now. Well, thank God someone did something at the school. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.